Welcome to the 6.5 Summit AI Unleashed. I'm joined today by Kush Panchpai, SVP of Product Management for ServiceNow's AI platform. And this enterprise app spotlight session, we're going to be talking about building strategic vision to real world impact with your AI. Kush, thanks so much for joining. Welcome to the summit. First time, glad to have you here. Thank you, Daniel. Thanks for the opportunity. Looking forward to the discussion today. Absolutely. Um, look, you have no, uh, you don't have big shoes to fill. Uh, your CEO, Bill McDermott, opened our entire event last year, and now we brought you here to keep this conversation going. Last year, we were talking about AI. We were talking about sort of how it's going to shift and change the future. Uh, you know, but gosh, even in a one-year time, Kush, I can't even tell you how much innovation, disruption, and change has taken place. Even the things we talked about one year ago versus now, it's an incredible time exponential time. So I want to hear from you, get a lot more of that. But one of the things that I've really enjoyed in following the journey of ServiceNow is just not only how the company has really changed and disrupted and evolved itself, but seeing the customers getting value. You know, you, li you like to talk a lot about kind of the future of what the software industrial complex looks like. You talk about reducing chair swivels, kind of new ways to bring systems together and make work more productive. So we know organizations are moving towards agentic platforms. Yeah. You know, as you're kind of watching these companies and these enterprises move this direction, what are some of the common challenges that you're seeing them face in terms of creating this coherent AI agent strategy? And kind of how do you recommend, what do you think they should do to balance innovation while keeping the operation on the rails and, you know, in, in minimizing complexity? So that's an amazing question. I think one of the common themes which uh, I'm observing is there is an organizational tension happening in inside the enterprise. Let me explain it to you. So what happens is you have product teams, engineers, designers, PMs, who wanna go 10X. They wanna innovate, they wanna embrace this amazing new technology. At the same time, you have another side of the organization. It could be the compliance team, it could be the legal team, it could be the privacy team. They wanna make sure that each and every step they are taking is measured. And when these two sides are colliding, that enterprise is kind of stalling. And one of the things which we encourage customers and we solve at the ground level in our platform is embedding governance in AI platform. And that's why our governance is not bolt on on top of it. In each and every layer, we are adding that governance and we have built tools for it. And it's not just governance, which is giving you visibility. It's workflows embedded in it. So risk and compliance workflows for which we are an industry leader is embedded in the products. At Knowledge this year, we launched AI Control Tower. Now, this is a single pane of glass in which you can see your entire AI footprint from AI agents to AI skills to AI models. You can govern them. You can see the performance of them. You can see the value it's creating so that both sides of the organizations are running in the same direction for the business strategy. We truly believe that governance is an accelerator rather than a break in the system. Yeah, I, I tend to agree because the big difference, and you know, we've seen how quickly consumer AI has proliferated. And it's basically because most of what we're using has come from open internet data. So the compliance risk was different. Like this data was yep. already out there, it was already available. Yep. And so we know that kind of in the early instantiations of trying to do AI in the enterprise, there was all the, okay, when we start commingling data, right? Remember yep. kind of even some of the early LLM use cases where like people were putting proprietary data in and it was yeah. causing all these problems because you know, now you're feeding it something that's constantly learning, something it maybe wasn't supposed to know. Yes. And then now once it knows it, it's like, how does that? So if you're, you know, with, when you service now and you're looking at companies, they're saying we're feeding, you know, critical HR data, we're feeding critical CRM data, we're feeding critical uh, infrastructure systems data about our company. Um, that company that is using your tools has to know that the data is safe. You know, we hear about it, whether it's through compliance and governance, through sovereignty, these are different angles. And of yeah. course, trust layers and security. So these are big things in the enterprise. 
probably has a lot to do why we can't go faster. I want to talk a little bit about hype here with you too, Fish, because, you know, we've had this kind of theory of AI and we hear, you know, AI is going to everything from, you know, it's going to take over the world. It's going to uh, take our jobs, but also it's going to create amazing growth, productivity, efficiency. Um, But we're also sort of hearing that like not everything that is theoretically happening is actually being deployed or even being deployed at scale. So mm-hmm. how do you think about sort of going from that kind of, we want AI to make us 10 times more productive to like going to an enterprise and saying, here's a practical, scalable approach to start getting outcomes um, in a timely manner because how fast things are going, but in a realistic capacity. So you used an amazing word, outcome. Yeah. I think one of the most important things enterprise needs to do is align their business strategy to the AI outcomes. And that's one of the things which is not happening naturally. You would see enterprises are like looking at how many models they are deploying, how many skills they are deploying. I guess the real question is what value that model brought to your business? What value does skill got to your business? So that we move from experimentation to aligning everyone to the business strategy and tackling those outcomes with AI. And I think that's when the real magic happens because you're measuring each and every uh, AI investment. You're figuring out, are you going in the right direction? You're governing that AI and seeing the value of that AI. And then you're course correcting it accordingly. And when you're aligning at the top level business strategy, you're solving it east west each and every department is coming in and figuring out okay for this business strategy how am i aligning how am i pitching in to make sure that this ai is an accelerator and helps us move forward compared to the competition and, and i'll give you an amazing example actually uh, so so we have a customer call astrazeneca everyone knows that like astrazeneca was spending 30 minutes per person on procurement. Now think about the amount of hours gone into procurement rather than researching and building life-saving drugs. So when AstraZeneca standardized on ServiceNow AI platform and automated those workflows, they saved 30,000 hours per year. Now that's real measurable impact because that is all the time gone into researching new diseases, coming up with new drugs, and essentially aligning to the mission of AstraZeneca and creating outcomes which are measurable. Yeah, and I like that you bring like a real world example. You know, companies in fields like healthcare kind of hit on both the things we've talked about in terms of the real world scale challenges, Kush, but they also, face the real governance challenges. They deal with a lot of very sensitive data. So they're trying to scale and move these workflows very, very quickly, but they also have a lot of sensitivities, whether it's trial data, customer data, you know. So you've got to really balance all that. Um, Talk to me a little bit about how, you know, enterprises should think about, you know, building a system of intelligence. Now that's a little bit of a different word. We've often heard system of record. In the AI era, you know, system of intelligence, it needs to be able to scale AI, but it has to really embed what we just talked about, you know, trust and transparency into every layer or else, you know, it, it's just not going to work in this particular era. So 100% spot on. I think scaling AI is super important. And if you're not doing it right, it's like building a skyscraper on sand. It may look amazing, but as soon as you do a little bit of scrutiny, that skyscraper falls down. And that's why we believe in providing governance and trust in each and every layer. When you can trust anything, your adoption increases with that. Like if a developer is producing something and you can trust it, you would adopt that features. If regulators can govern that, they will be more comfortable releasing it out there. So that's why with AI control tower, it's not just a system of record like you called out. 
it's a system of intelligence because we are embedding workflows into it compliance workflows legal workflows security workflows risk workflows and they are not just something which you treat as a department we are taking it east west north south approach because that's how you are going to able to scale ai now if you are just going to think about ai as a point solution and not a platform then you are not going to be able to do complete business transformation with this amazing technology so when we use ai control tower internally we see how much impact it's creating even for service now at service now we have a program called now on now where we drink our own champagne so we have seen that our self service deflection has gone 14% up in just 120 days when we deployed agentic ai internally we saw 10 million dollars of savings that's like having 50 employees throughput saved with ai which is super super amazing so we see the results internally we see the results with our customers here one external uh, example which i'll give you is bell canada used a service now ai platform for their customer service and in one year they deflected 3 million customer calls which is huge and they did that with compliance embedded in it so they ran fast with compliance baked in Yeah no I think that's a really important and I like your analogy cuz I use the east west analogy a lot too um you know we've talked a good bit about north south with big governments governance and such that kind of have to be built into the systems you know in this era we love talking about kind of fast paced infrastructure so today you and I have kind of talked about all the things that you should take a breath and a caution and think about as you're kind of building the stack But then the second part of it is as you build the stack and then you start to take it across systems because yes we are seeing companies like ServiceNow with what you're building the control tower and the now platform they can sort of aggregate you know in the agent era companies probably are not going to want to have agents running on hundreds of different softwares what they're going to want to do is build agents centrally deploy them and then like i said some things become databases um you know some are databases with logic uh, others is literally just going to be like you know middlewares and connectors and all the things that really need to happen to connect all the software in a, in a real enterprise state um so you got to do that and then you got to govern it and then the data has to, you know has to be you know really well thought out how it moves because you are responsible and you know in different regions of the world data leaks it's big risk not just to your customers but to you as well um you know how are you sort of approaching the challenge the, you know approaching this challenge of governing the fact that you're going to increasingly be pulling data you know you're doing raptor but i mean eventually everything is going to become the data and ideally if 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 you succeed at service now service now agents are going to scale and span across all the productivity and applications and databases and it is going to become this single pane of glass that we talk about how do you sort of approach that challenge and what do you, what can you kind of share from your current experience about what it's going to take to get that done so another amazing question i think one of the things which you will see uh from the service now ai platform is we bring three key ingredients on the platform ai plus data plus workflows and that's the key for business transformation because the fuel for ai is data so like you said we need to have data connectivity and with raptor and workflow data fabric we get that for our customers on top of that we build an amazing ai layer which you can go on and it's an open system where you can pick and choose which llm model which infrastructure you want to get it and then we bring in 20 years of our experience in doing workflows that's how we move work from east west north south and when you have these three ingredients on that platform this platform gives you everything you need to do that rewrite you were talking about because that's how you are building new outcomes you're solving new problems 
you're not only solving for operational efficiency, but you are thinking about how do I grow my top line with AI now so that I am growing from both sides of that equation. And especially with the workflows embedded into the platform, customers are able to run super fast. I gave example of our GRC workflows. Anytime you want to run a risk and compliance workflows, you are able to do that. And you are able to do that in a scalable way. Today, we have an EU act for AI, but we want to make sure that this platform is scaling to any new act which comes. And that's uh, how you do it with these workflows. A new act comes in, you plug it in, and that, that's where the machinery is churning behind the scenes to make sure that each and every regulation, each and everything the customer cares for is maintained on the platform. Yeah, I think there's a lot of challenges there and I appreciate you sort of trying to trying to simplify the next couple of years because you're going to be very interesting as companies kind of try to tie all these threads together. And that's why I said, I think as much as we want enterprise to move at that sort of speed of sound, it does take the right partners, it does take the right technologies. I think there is going to be some need for, you know, some, some uh, removal of some of the abstractions of how many layers an enterprise, you know, uh, has of software and of tools to be able to go as fast as we're going to need to go in the AI era, but it's really compelling. And of course, all the things that AI creates challenges, it can also be used to help us with all this stuff. Kush, I want to thank you so much for joining me here at this year's 6.5 Summit. It's been great chatting to you and uh, we'll have to do it again soon. Uh, I'm really enjoying following the, the ServiceNow journey. Likewise. Thank you, Daniel. And thank you everyone out there for joining us for this Enterprise Apps Spotlight at the 6.5 Summit talking about AI, a lot about governance there, compliance, really important stuff. And while some of that stuff is more, you know, it feels like it's the nitty gritty, we are never going to see enterprise scale if we don't consider all of those important details. Stay connected with us on social and explore all the conversations here at 65media.com slash summit. More insights coming up next.